Curcumin is a powerful natural compound that has been shown to have incredible health benefits. However, as always, there is hype and there is evidence. So what is truth and what is fiction? Let's find out. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Mao. I'm a triple board certified physician in New York City. And in this video, I will be talking about curcumin. Lots of my patients take this supplement and I thought it would be a good idea to do some research and make this video. Curcumin is a natural compound found in turmeric that as per some folks has outstanding health benefits. Now I'm gonna talk about cur what curcumin is, its research, and how you can start using it today to improve your health if you decide to do so. Vámonos. Okay, first, what is curcumin? It's a yellow pigment found primarily in turmeric. This substance is an antioxidant with anti-inflammatory properties and has the ability to increase the number of antioxidants that the body produces. And just to emphasize, curcumin is not the root, it's the extract. The potential beneficial effects of curcumin are mainly due to its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. These properties are direct or indirect interaction with various molecular targets, including transcription factors, enzymes, cell cycle proteins, blah, 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 all boring stuff. Now, let's start talking about its benefits. Does curcumin reduce inflammation? Inflammation, remember, is a natural response of the body to an injury or infection. Still, it can also contribute to various chronic diseases, especially when it's constant what we call chronic subclinical inflammation. Curcumin has been shown to inhibit the production of inflammatory compounds in the body, which might help to reduce the symptoms of conditions like arthritis or Crohn's disease. But remember, I said might. It's a mystery of sorts what causes inflammation, but curcumin is one exciting way to reduce it. Many studies have shown that consuming curcumin can help reduce inflammation. It has proven effective for inflammation-related ailments such as osteoarthritis. But how does it work? When inflammation occurs, molecules activate enzymes and cytokines that increase inflammation. But curcumin inhibits the release of these substances. So by consuming curcumin, we might control inflammation before it gets started. That's definitely something worth talking seriously about. But the big question is, does this happen in humans? In a randomized single-blind trial, 367 participants with knee osteoarthritis were assigned to take 1,500 milligrams of a turmeric extract or 800 milligrams of ibuprofen daily for four weeks. The primary outcomes were pain, stiffness, and function. Both groups saw notable reductions in all measures with no clinical or statistically significant difference. Adverse events were observed in 35% of ibuprofen users and 29% of turmeric extract users, with no, again, no difference. And there are other studies like this, which means that it does have some potential use for osteoarthritis. At least we know it works just as well as ibuprofen. Now, does curcumin boost brain function? Well, it is tough to tell. Curcumin has been gaining a lot of attention as a natural way to improve brain health. This spice is believed to have several benefits for healthy brain function. As inflammation can impact the functioning of our neurons, curcumin acts as an anti-inflammatory agent aiding in reducing inflammation and its side effects. In addition, curcumin contains powerful antioxidants. So these antioxidants can help protect our neurons from damage and destruction, allowing our neurons to transmit information more effectively between different parts of the brain. Considering all these advantages it offers, it's not a surprise that curcumin is seen as a helpful ally in improving brain health. But again, folks, does it work in humans? First, let's talk about depression. And I really want to talk about depression because this is interesting. In a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled pilot study, 108 male participants with major depression were assigned to take a placebo or 1,000 milligrams of curcuminoids for six weeks. But all participants were also given antidepressants. This is super important, as this was not done instead of antidepressant, but added to antidepressant. The curcumin group saw a modest reduction in depression, as measured by some scores. 
which were statistically significant compared with placebo. The percentage of participants achieving at least a 50% reduction in their score was higher in the curcumin group. And this group saw a significant decrease in inflammation as shown by different blood tests. I mean, so far, so good. But in this study, they show an increase in BDNF levels. This is exciting news. Why? BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor, is a protein involved in the growth, maturation, and maintenance of nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. BDNF is produced by nerve cells and is released in response to stimuli such as nerve activity, exercise, and stress. In a nutshell, this substance is essential for the development and plasticity of the nervous system and plays a central role in learning, memory, and mood. This regulation of BDNF signaling has been implicated in some neurological and psychiatric disorders, including Alzheimer's disease, depression, and schizophrenia. I am personally not ready to recommend curcumin for brain health just yet as the data is limited, but this link with BDNF, I gotta say, is worth following. Does curcumin prevent cancer? Another potential effect of curcumin is its ability to prevent certain types of cancer. Curcumin has been shown to inhibit cancer cell growth and induce apoptosis or cell death. Additionally, curcumin has been shown to reduce the risk of several types of cancer, including breast cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer. But again, most of these studies have been done in cell lines rather than in actual human beings. Let's talk about colon cancer, for instance. In an eight-week randomized control trial, 67 adults undergoing chemotherapy for stage 3 colorectal cancer took capsules containing either 500 mg of curcumin plus 5 mg of piperine or a placebo. The outcomes were several inflammatory markers, quality of life, functional quality of life, symptom quality of life, global quality of life. The results show that compared to placebo, curcumin supplementation improved inflammation markers. Functional and global quality of life worsened more with placebo compared with curcumin. Still, symptom quality of life improved more with placebo compared to curcumin. So this area remained the same. We definitely need more studies. So far in cancer, curcumin is a meh. Additional and potential benefits. Well, curcumin may also help to reduce the risk of heart disease by lowering the oxidation of cholesterol. Additionally, curcumin has been shown to improve blood vessel function, reduce inflammation in the arteries, and improve symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. One big problem with curcumin is that it's poorly absorbed. That is why some companies have added certain types of fats and piperine, a black pepper extract, to help increase the absorption with good results. Another thing to consider is side effects. Studies using high doses of curcumin have reported some mild adverse effects, such as nausea, diarrhea, headaches, skin rash, and yellow stool. Using curcumin with a black pepper extract may cause adverse drug reactions because this substance significantly increases intestinal permeability. Not all formulations of curcumin have been safely tested to the same degree, unfortunately. I do not recommend specific brands because I would have to do research one by one to know the quality protocols, and sorry, I do not have the time or the legwork. In conclusion, curcumin is a powerful antioxidant, we know that, and, but most of its studies are in cell lines or animals in labs. In terms of human health, osteoarthritis seems to be the primary winner, and perhaps as an adjuvant in depression along with antidepressants. And always bear in mind that supplements need more quality standards, so it's hard to tell which one to use. I honestly recommend to my patients looking for supplements that have been third-party tested uh, with labels such as NSF or USP. The most usual dose of curcumin has been 1500 milligrams paired with an agent that increases absorption. Hope you found this information helpful and remember to subscribe to my channel right now. Dr. Mao explains. Three, two, one.